Good morning and praise the name of the Lord. This is another day that God has given us that we can be able to enjoy and rejoice in it. We want to take this opportunity for this wonderful time that we can be able to share the word of God with you. And today I want to share with you a topic that I'm calling it the doctrine of God. Because there are so many doctrines that are going on in this nation of Kenya and many other nations. They are doctrine of the devil, they are doctrine of men, and they are doctrine of God. So this morning I want to share with you this topic, the doctrine of God, which Paul encouraged him and many other servants of God. And so let us read the word of God from 1 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse 6. Paul is telling Timothy, Before you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou sought to be a good minister of Christ. Nourish up the word of faith and of good doctrine where you have, where you have us attained. So there are those doctrines that we have attained. There are those doctrines of God that we have attained from men and women of God. And we need to continue teaching the good doctrine because are a word of faith and of a good doctrine. This hot power was advising Timothy. Then he continued, Paul talked to Titus, telling him in Titus 1 and verse number 9, he told him, Hold fast the faithful word as he has been taught. So here Paul is advising Titus that the, the, the word that he has, has been taught to hold fast faithfully the word that he has been already taught, the word of good doctrine, the word of sound doctrine. So it's very important for us to hold tight the word that we have been hand, the word that we have been taught, the, the word of sound doctrine. That's why Paul was telling uh, Titus to be faithful, that he may be able uh, to, to, to both teach and exhort and confusing other people that sound doctrine and this is what we need we need to continue helping one another that people especially in this hard time people you hold faithfully the sound doctrine the doctrine of the word of god that you exhort us at a time like this that when you edify us at a time like this the one that you built us at a time like this. That's why you and me, we need God doctrine, which are a sound doctrine. If you continue in your Bible, but Paul advised Timothy in, uh, in uh, Titus 2, from verse 1 to verse number 3. But speak these things which are a sound doctrine. We are supposed to speak things which are of sound. That's what Paul was advised to Timothy. But the eight men be super, grief, temper, and sound faith in charity and repetition. The eight women likewise, that they be behavior, behavior has become holy, not false, accuser, not given much wine, teachers of good things. We might not be able to go deep to that one, but all what I'm talking is about it. Uh, people having good and sound doctrine that they might be able to continue helping others, building others, exhorting others, and helping others with a sound doctrine, which Paul taught Timothy and Titus. If you also read in the book of Second Timothy, chapter number three and verse fourteen to seventeen, Bible says. But continue thou in these things, 
which hast thou run and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. The thing that Paul taught Timothy, he was telling them to continue assuring others the thing that he has already run, which are sought to exhort, to build, and to edify. If you continue reading, the Bible says that, and that from child thou hast known of the whole scripture. That, thank God that, that Paulo was telling Timothy that since he was a child, he has hand of this sound doctrine, he has hand of exhortation, he has hand of advice, he has hand of beauty when he was a child. So Timothy grew under the hand of Timothy since he was a child. So Timothy knew God's doctrine through St. Paul, which was his father in faith. And that's why he said in verse 16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and they are profitable of doctrine for reproof, for collection, for instruction in righteousness. You see, this is very powerful because Paul is telling Timothy, Paul is telling Timothy that all the scriptures is given by inspiration of God and those scriptures are profitable. Those scriptures are of doctrine. Those scriptures are reproof. Those scriptures are for the correction. Those scriptures are for instruction in righteousness. So we are talking about the doctrine of God because the doctrine of God are profitable. They are, they are sound. They, they also reprove. They also correct. And they also bring instruction in the ways of righteousness. My dear friend, we are talking about the doctrine of God and that the man of God may be perfect. When we are instructed, when we are reproved, when we are inspired, when we are collected, when we are instructed in the ways of righteousness, Bible says that the man of God will be perfect through furnishing unto all good works. Friends, this hard time which we are right now, we need doctrine of God. Because if you don't go with the doctrine of God, we must not be able to enjoy salvation. We must not even enjoy Christianity. We must not enjoy the things of God. But if we, are con if we, we continue in, do in a God's doctrine, we are going to enjoy, enjoy Christianity. Because the things of God are not complicated. That's why you and me, at a time like this, you need God's doctrine, which we have already learned from, uh, from those scriptures that we have read. Now, you might ask me, what is the doctrine of God? What are the doctrine of God? Let me tell you. One, doctrine of God is out. Wherever you are, wherever you are hearing me, I want to let you know. I don't know who preached to you. I don't know who you, you always see here. But I want to let you know that the doctrine of God is sound. So if you are going to enjoy your Christianity, if you are going to enjoy this Christianity, you must know that all the time that the doctrine of God is sound. That's how you can be able to know God's doctrine. Number two, God doctrine is pure. God doctrine is pure. That's why I told you that the things of God are not complicated. Many people complicate the word of God. Many people complicate the things of God. They are not complicated because the doctrine of God which we are hearing now, yeah, the doctrine of God is pure. So my dear friend, if you want to know the doctrine of God, you must know the doctrine of God is, are always pure in Jesus' name. That's why today we must encourage one another, knowing for sure that the doctrine of God can help us in this very hard time we are. Number three, my dear friend, the doctrine of God is scriptural. The doctrine of God is scriptural. 
Anything that you hear from a preacher, anything that you hear even from Bishop Kenyaru, anything that you hear from any preacher, every doctrine of God is scripture, scriptural law. Every teaching must be scriptural law. Every prophecy must be scriptural law. Those are called God's doctrine. And the doctrine of God are sound. The doctrine of God are pure. The doctrine of God are sound. You cannot go astray when you are in, when you are hearing God's doctrine. When you are lying with the doctrine of God, you cannot even, you cannot be astray at any time in your life as a Christian. And number four, the doctrine of God bring development of the divine nature and character of Christ within us. Oh my God, that's very powerful. That's why you and me, we need God doctrine. Because I told you earlier, they are doctrine of men, they are doctrine of the devil, and they are doctrine of God. So it's you and me to know whether you are going to hear doctrine of men or doctrine of men or a doctrine of God. Because point number four, the doctrine of God bring development of divine nature and the character, the character of Christ within us. Every doctrine, the doctrine, the doctrine of God must bring that character of Christ in us. Every child doctrine of God must bring that nature of Christ in us. Every doctrine of Christ is pure, is out. And that's why a time like this one, my dear friend, where, when there are so many preachers, we need to know that in this hard time, we really need a sound doctrine. When you have sound doctrine, you cannot be stressed. When you have God's doctrine, you cannot be frustrated in Jesus' name. Number five, remember we are talking about God's doctrine. The doctrine of God maintain purity. The doctrine of God maintain God's purity. My dear friend, you need God's doctrine because when we have that God's doctrine in our life, we are going to maintain purity in our life. It's, it's going to maintain purity in our life. And I declare to you, whatever you are, may you, may you go for God's doctrine. May you continue to desire God, God doctrine that you can continue maintaining God's purity in your life for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And number six, my dear friend, remember we are talking about God doctrine because they are doctrine of the devil, they are doctrine of men. But remember, right now, I'm teaching you about God's doctrine. Number six, the doctrine of God maintain fellowship and unity. The doctrine of God always maintain fellowship and unity. Maintain unity in the family. That's why, that, that's why you need, you need the God doctrine. If you, are a, if you are a Christian and you don't maintain unity in the family, you don't maintain the friendship, the unity in the, in the local church, you must know that you're not having the, the doctrine of God. Because all the time, the doctrine of God always maintains fellowship and unity. If you are a person who is of the devil to bring divisions and hatred and disunity and discord in a family or in a, in a local church or in the body of Christ, you must know that you are not in God's doctrine. Please come to God's doctrine that you can be able to unite your family, to unite in the local church, to unite the body of Christ. That's why you need the doctrine of God a time like this, according to the word of God. Number seven, my dear friend, number seven, the doctrine of God also bring liberty in our life. The doctrine of God always bring liberty in our life. Listen to this. Doctrine of God does not bring bondage. Because there are so many Christians and they are so many, they are so many, they are so bowed by doctrine of men and by doctrine of the devil. Friends, if you follow doctrine of men and of the devil, you are going to be bowed. You cannot be able to be excited. You cannot be able to enjoy your Christianity because you are bowed by the tradition of men. You are bowed by the, by the doctrine of men and of the devil. And you cannot be able to enjoy your Christianity. You cannot be able to enjoy your salvation because you are being bowed 
to those doctrine of men and of the devil. But I want to let you know, you can have liberty, you can have a freedom, you can be able to be delivered by a sound doctrine. If you don't have a sound doctrine, you are going to be bound by false teaching and by false prophecy. Friend, have what you call the sound doctrine that you are going to have a liberty in your spirit in this time of coronavirus in Jesus' name. And finally, my dear friend, number eight, God's doctrine. God, or the doctrine of God is full of love because God's love. The doctrine of God is full of love. My dear friend, I don't know where you are. I don't know where you fellowship. I don't know your church. But I want to let you know that the doctrine of God is love. It's full of love. It's not full of hatred. It's not full of uh, bitterness. No, the doctrine of God is full of love because God is love. And because God is love, that's why all of us, we all need God's doctrine at a time like this. I don't know where you are, my dear friend. Maybe wherever you are. Where, where you are right now, as I'm speaking about God's doctrine, you are not saved. You have not even given your life to Jesus Christ. Even in this time that we are passing a very hard time, you are still, you are still uh, a sinner. You have not even given your life to Jesus. My friend, you can repent and you can receive Christ as your personal Savior wherever you are. You can cry to Jesus and tell Jesus, come to my heart and forgive me all my sin and write my name in the book of life and give me that power to be confessing to the people that you have saved me, you have forgiven me all my sin, that I can be able to enjoy God's doctrine in my life at a time like this. Please, if you have if you receive Christ as a pastor savior, you are going to have a testimony and we are going to share with the other people that Christ has saved you. May the Lord help you, may the Lord also help me that this time we can continue, we can continue hearing only the doctrine of God because we have the anointing of God in us. When we have the anointing of God in us, we can be able to know the doctrine of men and the doctrine of the devil and the doctrine of God. You can be able to know it because you have the anointing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you and me, in this hard time, we are going to walk with this wonderful doctrine of God and we are going to enjoy our salvation. Salvation is not going to be abundant to us. Christianity is not going to be abundant to us, but we are going to enjoy to walk with our God at a time like this. I declare you are a blessed of the Lord. I declare you are going to enjoy this wonderful day which God has given you. I declare you are going to walk with that revelation of God. I declare you are going to a desire to walk with God's doctrine and you are going to have liberty in your life. May the Lord give you a good day. May the Lord give you a good week. May you prosper in whatever you do. May you, may, may you enjoy the, the, the blessing of God. May the face of God shine upon you. I bless you this morning and this week in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed.